What's up guys, this is Coach Donnie from Elevate Yourself, where we change lives through volleyball, training, and inspirational content. Welcome to my volleyball coach reaction to Q Season 3, Episode 6. If you're new to this channel, I'm a volleyball coach, volleyball player, and personal trainer who provides volleyball tutorials, jump training workouts, and other cool volleyball videos. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for more content. I'm super excited to announce that one of my great partners, Upper Echelon Nutrition, just released their sleep support supplement. Many of us suffer from poor sleep quality, whether it's working, studying, having too much to do, or just living life in general. The good news for you and me is that Upper Echelon developed a scientifically formulated sleep support product to help promote restful sleep, allow you to wake up feeling refreshed and improve your recovery from athletic performance. You can use my discount code linked below to get 15% off your sleep support supplement as well as all their other great supplements such as their whey protein, creatine, and collagen supplement. It was interesting to see the contrast between the two blocking methodologies from Tendo to Tsuki, where Tendo is more intuitive and Tsuki is more systematic. And the reality is you actually need both. You do want to start from a systematic point where you're analyzing hitter tendencies, trying to read setter movements, but at some point you also have to incorporate some instinct because when you're having that gut feeling, you're actually making millions of calculations that you won't be able to process consciously and you just have to trust it sometimes. Other times you need to slow yourself down and think about what you're doing to make the best blocking decision. I did think it was super cool that we saw Iwaizumi and Oikawa show up to watch the game dressed up in their snazzy clothing, but it also adds to their character development of how much they care about this competition and how invested they are in being great volleyball players. This is a great question. I definitely love winning championships but what's even more gratifying is being able to rebuild a program because when that team does do well, you know for certain that you were a big part of that. Whereas if you inherited a great program, you are still building on someone else's great success, which is still a good thing, but it doesn't have as much gratification knowing that you built something from nothing. If you've been enjoying my videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon, where you receive exclusive access to my monthly live Q&A sessions, monthly podcasts, my private blog, behind the scenes footage, and more. Now let's get this high cue party started. More backstory flashbacks. Ooh, Tsuga's first year. That's cool. Ooh, little baby Asahi before this man bun era. Thank you for hating Mue. Oh, that was an intentional typo. <laughs> That's funny. Ooh, Daichi still got that same level of confidence though. I think this is where Karasuno was no longer a powerhouse. I think that's the advisor. Uh, I think this must be where Coach Grandpa Ukai is no longer coaching. Man, look how skinny they are. Uh, okay, that's why there's the downfall of the program. When you don't have a coach, it's hard to improve, so you can't really blame them for not being as good in the recent years. The chemical change of encounters, I'm assuming that means the chemistry that develops between teams or that develops from playing tough teams. Kurokawa. Uh, this is probably showing what it's like without a coach where there's not a lot of instruction or clear direction or development. 
習試合少ないよな鵜飼監督がいなくなってから他校とのつながりもすげえ減ったっていうもんな最近まで練習試合の相手にも貯金の試合断られたってえなんだ俺たちに貴重な時間を割く価値がないってことだ Man, Kirakawa already looks defeated. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. But I'm going to be able That sucks for these incoming players going to that school, wanting that experience, and then realizing that things have changed completely. Yeah. Yeah, a team without a coach is with no direction. And these analogies. Roots holding you down. I love the motivation from this group. I'm not surprised knowing them. But Kirakawa is probably going to shut them down. This is super cute, man. Three volleyball junkies wanting to make each other better. It's kind of like Kageyama and Hinata, right? Want to spend endless time trying to practice. <laughs> to love Daichi's hyper focus and trying to apply it. The small amount of feedback and instruction you got from Kirokawa. This reminds me of a drill that we actually do for serve receive. In my opinion, serve receive passing is the most difficult skill in volleyball. I'll probably explain that in another commentary, but it's, in my opinion, there's the psychological factors, there's the technical skill factor, and then there's just so much time for the ball to change direction, especially on a float serve. So, there's a drill we do to help our players track the ball and move their feet without worrying about passing, and that's catching the ball. Because a lot of times when we try to pass the ball well, we only think of our platform or our hands, and then we get distracted from the most important part of passing, which is reading with your eyes and getting my feet to or behind the ball. Instead, a lot of people will form the platform early and just chase after it with their platform. So to eliminate the pressure of having a pass well, we just tell the kids, catch the ball, just focus on tracking with your eyes and moving with your feet. And I've found consistently that that makes people's uh, passing ability, especially in service receive, much better. Then as soon as we throw the platform in there, they accidentally get better at passing because now their feet are set up, now they've read the ball, and then all of a sudden they just put their platform together and the ball goes to where they want. So it's, it's really funny to see kind of that aha moment for the players when they realize that, wow, it really isn't about my platform. It is about my footwork and my eye work. So again, Asahi, you got a little smirk. They know that Daichi's been working on that. These guys have been training for the high Q halftime too. I like that somebody on the team is excited. But then, uh, why don't we strive for something more attainable? Here's the downer from the team. That's tough. When you want to strive for something more, but your teammates aren't as ambitious as you. That's when I would ask them, why are you on the team? I understand exactly what this club captain is feeling. And maybe some of you guys feel like that on your team. Sometimes you just want to go up to some of your teammates and just say, why the heck are you even here? If you're not going to try your hardest, not only are you wasting your time, you're wasting other people's time that actually want to get better, and you're wasting my time. So I definitely empathize, and I'm starting to feel really bad for the original group of Suga, Asahi, and... Gosh, who was that third one? Daichi? Can't forget Daichi. And now the club captain, and it's no surprise that he is the club captain, because he seems to care the most. 
And that's just one of the most discouraging moments when you feel amped up and you feel excited. And then you have that realistic teammate that goes, why try so hard? Kind of like a Suki. He's like the original Suki, just more expressive. Um, not the club captain, the guy next to him that has the spiky hair. Oh, but he got his team fired up. But they're probably going to get smashed here and get discouraged at the inter high qualifiers. Oh, there we got the. I'm going to call him the trucker fan because he, he dresses like a, a truck driver. Oh yeah, we got the freshman crying. That's so important for people to to break down and to have those moments where it just hurts because that's what motivates you for years and years after that. And the crows are flying away, so symbolic. The crows might not come back. Oh. I wish that, that club captain would come back and coach the team. I love the flashbacks in, in high queue. That Leon hitting right over Hinata. Twenty twenty. Chasbol. Not as late, but he's fast. Oh, great day from Kageyama. And flashy jump set from Nishinoya. Wow, quick set from Isahi from the barrel. That's impressive. Nice kill. <laughs> this is a beautiful team work sequence. Yes, Hinata, you know, put up a good block and forced the hitter to hit line, and then Kageyama was able to dig down the line because the block is well set up, and then Nishinoya was able to execute his libero set. Hinata went up for the fake, and then Asahi got the kill. So physically, the teamwork looked good, but more importantly, look at what happens afterward. Everyone is complimenting each other. Daichi says, nice kill. And then Asahi is saying, I don't want to lose to Hinata and Tanaka. I want to get just as many kills as them. That's some healthy inter-team competition. And I think we have someone talking right after also. Let's see. Yeah, and then Daichi says, great dig. That's what you got to do. You know what's so interesting is that we're actually working on those elements on our team at Moreau Catholic High School. That's the girls volleyball team that I'm currently coaching. We've been emphasizing so much on uplifting each other. That's actually one of the, the themes of our practice shirts and one of the values of our season this year. Uplifting each other. The ability to make people around you better is so valuable. Not only does it make you better because you feel less pressure on yourself to be the best and to do great all the time, but you're also making other people better by encouraging better effort, better execution, and when they get down, you're encouraging them so that they don't have to get down on themselves. And I think that's one thing we can take away from Karasuno that models all future volleyball players to do the same. Uplift each other, find a way to make people around you better, and the best way is by complimenting them, encouraging them. And I've already paused it like four times so far. Lots of life lessons in this episode. Then we got the freshman coming back in. Oh no, he's a serving specialist. Got a whippy jump serve here. He looks pretty muscular. Ooh, that was a great point of view look. One handed set from Kageyama. But we got a freshman here, or we got a first year, a little inexperienced. Oh ho, that was sick. Kageyama with that one handed set, and Hinata just expecting there to be early. 
いやでもあの動きを繰り返すのはいくらなんでもしんどすぎるだろう Tendo talks like he's being sarcastic No, 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 no. <laughs> ha! That was hilarious. Let's watch that again. That's also some of the most emotion we've seen from Suki. That Yamaguchi was just trying to encourage him by teasing him, but. It's probably gonna work. Ooh, Yamaguchi time! <laughs> Ooh, I love it. You, you can't out trash talk Tsuki. I like that. Coach telling them to sit. I tell my, my players to sit all the time. Don't under underestimate the power of sitting. Oh, come on, Yamaguchi. What is it, 21 20? Maybe he can close the game out. That's a high toss for a jump float, though. Ooh. In the corner, forcing an awkward hand pass. Oh, out of system, and Ushiwaka couldn't hit. We got the first year here. It's probably gonna get blocked. Oh, soft block from Suki. Hachi! Nakara! Oh, the pump one? From Tsuki. Oh, that was sick. Did they really just do a pump one with Nishinoya? Oh, dang. We gotta watch that again. That was sick. Oh, there we go. Is that Nishinoya? I think that's Kageyama setting him. Man. That was pretty nasty. Even the even Coach Ukai can't handle that one. Man, look at Tsuki with his goggles. Invested. Wow, Karasuna up by two now. <laughs> Hinata does feel like he's losing. <laughs> Oh, I already like this coach already. I love his eyebrows, man. They're just unrealistically thick. They're just... It almost looks like a turtle. Ho oh ho. And it's just like that. Ushijima cuts through with his black and white statements. That means he's going to come and bang. Nice, great jump float, wobbling, skimming off the net, taking the setter out. Oh no. But they're gonna set to Ushiwaka from the left side though. And he just takes the air out of the room. Some hitters are just so powerful. Yeah, we'll see how long Ushiwaka's legs hold up in the fifth set if they happen to go that far. Oh, he's breathing heavy. That's the first sign of weakness we've seen from Ushiwaka. Easy cover from Nishinoya. Oh, back one. Just missed from Suki. Oh, saves it. He does a Hinata save. Oh my gosh. I have a crazy story to tell. This is not realistic. I've seen this happen firsthand. And unfortunately, I was coaching Mission San Jose High School during the early years when I didn't have a YouTube channel or at least my YouTube channel wasn't that big, so I didn't really think of recording our games. One of our middles, her name is Michelle. I'm not gonna tell you her last name because I don't want you guys to stalk her and destroy her privacy. She was only five foot six, but she had good hops and she only had one mode, work your hardest every single time. She didn't always make the smartest moves all the time, but 
her intuition and her instincts were just so it was it was something that i couldn't teach her it's something she came in already and we just taught her how to refine it we give her technique to amplify her ability so there was a play i forgot who we were playing where she comes in and she goes in for the one our setter who's five eight which is funny our setter's taller than our middle she sets her a little bit too high and then Rochelle goes up swings and misses and then behind her covers her own self and gets the ball over for the point because people are just like so caught off guard that someone could do that and they're shocked when the ball does land in and yes it does require, require some athleticism but more importantly it just requires a lot of termination and not giving up you cannot pick and choose when you want to work hard it has to be a habit because the moment you try to decide whether something's possible the ball is already gone you just have to make those impossible moves all the time whether or not it works just make it a habit and just do it that's a great save <laughs> yeah as an audience member you feel like you're gonna piss in your pants well, we'll see if Karasuno can finish. Was that the last point already? I thought it was 23 21. Looks like is tired. Interesting observation. That's right. Answer that that Kageyama's the one that's gonna gas. I mean he's probably had to work the hardest if Kasuna's not passing well. Oh now they're gonna milk Ushijima. Maybe this is what he's been saving his energy for. For the other team to tire out and for him to just blow it up. Oh we got a sub for the middle. Multiple pinch servers. Yeah. Oh, another jump floater of an own. The own Yamaguchi. Oh, got Nishinoya. Soft block. Easy dig. And then set. Ushijimi. Ushijima. The hammer. Oh wow, he finally tips. And no one's ready for that because they're all dug in. That's right. The middle back has to move deeper. I love it. Look at that wisdom from Coach Eyebrows. Wow, it's already tied up. talk a lot that, about that with my players a lot you know tipping is not about power it's about deception everyone was dug in expecting Ushijima to blast it <laughs> Ooh, Tendo talking trash I love it like a zombie though I mean every move is just so so creepy oh right back at him I love it <laughs> We know who never gets tired is Hinata. That's cute. Suki's older brother cheering him on to serve into the water bottle. Wow, Ushijima getting into the water bottle contest. But he's, he hits the tape. He is human. Hmm. Yeah, I love it. Tsuga's ready. I was just gonna say, just give uh, Tsuga a chance to come in just for a serve to give him a little more break. Oh, is it gonna slip through his hands? No, he saves it. That was clean. Oh, smackdown from Tendo. Is that a discouraged look from. Suki? Oh, 
and so it would happen. But look at that, the warriors are ready. Oh, Dribbler, is Kageyama gonna get it? Oh no! Mirakaru boy! I love, I love these these English Japanese words. Yeah, this is intense. That rock music, that electric guitar is going crazy. Something tells me, oh look at that, like his warriors in front of him. Something tells me that Ushijima is just going to get a clean ace. That is interesting. That is such a cool analogy. You feel like you have nowhere else to go, and if you make a mistake, you are gonna fall over the cliff. Oh! Can he save it? Oh, he saves it! <laughs> oh no, are they gonna set Ushijima to finish the game? They will. No, they don't, they set Leon. Uh, based on the music, looks like Karasuno's dreams are going to get destroyed. Oh wow, Karasuno comes back with a block! Both blockers demonstrating great late blocking technique. Ideally, you always want to get your feet positioned and then jump straight up and down, but sometimes the set is too fast or too deceptive where you're going to be late with your feet, but at least you could be on time with your hands. So you see how particularly Tsuki is trying to close the seam laterally and then I don't know if they're going to illustrate it here, but he kind of turns his hands, or he should turn your hands in a little bit to deflect the ball back into the court. Biggest mistake blockers make is that when they reach laterally, they tend to flex their palms back because they're reaching back instead of across. And when you reach back, it's an easy tool to the outside of the court. So great blocking technique here from Tsuki. I don't know, it looks like Kageyama got a piece of that. Such emotional music, I got tricked hardcore. And now Ushijima's off the line. <laughs> oh. Dang, I hope their fighting doesn't doesn't cause the team to to break down because any argument can can really disrupt the team. The trucker gives a history lesson. <laughs> I was wondering why his face changed all of a sudden. He was gathering his breath to yell something. To give his team an extra push. Even Grandpa Ukai recognizes him. Oh, now we got that. That baseline. Now it's now it's go time. Karasuna's gonna win this one. So we gotta send in the little dog here. This is really hard to do. I don't know if you guys know this before, but this is the principle that has the toupee, right? But to draw hair, especially in a cartoonish manner, to make it look like a toupee while still covering his entire head, that's really hard to do. And they do it with only two strokes that overlap each other. So I think it's that extra stroke that interrupts the line that makes the hair look fake because your brain probably thinks, well, why is that line crossing through? Shouldn't it just be a clean overlap? I think if it was a clean overlap where that line doesn't pass through, it would look like real hair, but because it's kind of see-through, it feels almost fake. I, I, this whole time I've been thinking like, how are they able to communicate the, the toupee feel without actually removing the hair or driving the hair being removed? I mean, part of that is you know it's a toupee, but still, the hair looks pretty fake here. Excellent job from the animators. And too many cheers to learn. I no longer cheer with the crowd because each team has a, a very specific cheer. 
<laughs> I love it. That's what you want to hear from your hitters is, I don't care what set you give me, I'm going to do something good with it. Let's see, oh, they got Suga's. He's a great spot server. Maybe he's trying to serve it short to throw Leon out. Predictable offense. Oh, Suga with his defense. Tip. Oh, no, he gets blocked, but he's going to get covered by Suga. Ow. Ooh, lucky play. Man, Suga coming in and making a huge impact. Yeah, I love it. That's what you want from your setters. Just a high level confidence to just get the job done and not make excuses. Oh, is this chance to serve? Annie's tired, extra sweaty. Sakoi! Look at that determ. Oh. That's a short serve. Interesting. Oh, that crazy pattern from Hinata. Let's see what life lesson he's going to apply here. That was a weird move. I wonder what he did there. Let's see, if he was flying right and the ball was dying left, that means he tipped it in short with his left hand. Oh, even Ushiwaka is frozen. That was an interesting sequence. Wow, they came up on top and won the fourth set. <laughs> we got the old coach just constantly yelling. Here's another interesting I noticed about the artwork. Notice that everyone who talks, usually you can only see the teeth. But, well, let me, actually, let me show you some examples here. You look at Takeda Sensei and Grand, uh, Coach Ukai, they all, you can only see the teeth and maybe the tongue. But for the old coach from Shiro Toizawa, you can see lots of gum. And I wonder if it's because they're trying to illustrate that he's wearing dentures because he's older. Like to not not to not to make fun of old people. I think they're doing that to to help sell that he's an older coach and by giving him dentures. But how do you draw dentures compared to real teeth? Their solution was to add a lot of gum to make it look artificial. Man, all this incredible detail, it just never, just when you think it gets good, it gets even better when you start to notice these little details. Man, Shiro Toizawa fans don't know what to do. That was two reaction plays from Tsuki, who did a, a one-handed falling away save and then Hinata from a drifting offhand tip. I would like to see the captain be here to enjoy the moment that he wasn't able to be a part of. The old captain from Karasuno. What is Hinata doing? <laughs> it's like a little puppy. <laughs> nice. Oh, that's funny. Finally got a compliment from Kageyama. Super intense game as always, and I was pleasantly surprised by the two little animated details from this animation. Let me know if anybody else noticed these things. And I actually is surprised that I noticed it on the first time around. Usually when I watch it again or when I rewind it, I kind of notice it, but Man, these details, I was particularly fascinated with how realistic some of those saves were. Like from Suki, missing the quick set and then saving himself, and then Hinata. I see that actually happen more with left side hitters, where when they, the ball gets set a little wide, the right-handed hitter will do this, will miss the right hand, and then save it with the left hand. 
And that's just a reaction. I've done that a couple times before on accident, just trying to keep the ball in play. And then you accidentally score. Actually, more often than not, I've been... When the set is going too wide and I can't get my feet there, I've actually been using my left hand to just roll it in and it ends up being a, a kill because people aren't prepared for that. I'm really curious what Kageyama's setting is going to look like because already we saw two very uncharacteristic, inaccurate sets from him and we see that fatigue is being a part of it. And he also served short, so I don't know if that was a strategic serve or maybe that was him trying to save some energy because he knew that he wasn't able to hit hard from being tired. I'm hoping that Suga comes in, gives Kageyama some rest, or gets a chance to set um, if Kageyama struggles and ends up winning the game for Karasuno in the fifth set. Because if anyone's deserving of a great experience, it's, it's Suga. I mean, he's putting so much work into the team, caring for his players, and just being ready and contributing in a substitute role. But I'm going to have to stick with my original prediction that just for the stake of I'm sorry, I said just for the stake. Just for the sake of extending the anime and building more tension. Unfortunately, I think Karasuno is going to lose in five in dramatic fashion, of course. And Ushijima is just going to come back even more pissed off, crush it more, tip it better, and serve them off the court. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll see you guys in the next one.